Hey everybody and thank you for joining me. Now I want to talk about something a little bit different today. I want to talk about AR, augmented reality. Now whilst virtual reality looks set to bring us some awesome entertainment for many years to come, AR looks set to be the next big step in personal computing, the next frontier. It looks like it could have a massive impact on our society, possibly bigger than that of the smartphone. If done right, it could be incredible. If done wrong, it could be disastrous for modern society. Now, it's no secret that I love this kind of tech. When it launches, I'll probably be first to slap it on my face. And when we crack down for these crimes against humanity that I'm about to discuss, I'll likely be first against the wall. But I think it's really important that we recognize these challenges so the tech can be built in the right way. In its most obvious form, we're talking the likes of smart glasses where you're getting data placed around the world in front of you. Very different to virtual reality because it doesn't take away everything you see and move you to a different place, it adds to what's already there. And there are some big companies making waves in this kind of tech. Meta are pushing forwards with Project Aria, which is set to be their first high-end AR glasses. And going up against them, we know very well that Apple are pushing on with the development of the Apple glasses. So, what are these challenges and what can we do to stop them? Well, the first one is the obvious one that you've probably all thought about straight away, and that is privacy. Now Google Glass wasn't AR glasses, it was smart glasses, but it faced the same kind of concerns that we're going to deal with almost immediately with AR glasses. That is the fact that they involve subtly placing cameras on the user's face. Now when Google Glass launched, the world wasn't ready for that and the product ultimately failed pretty much because of that. It raised so many privacy and security concerns to see people walking around with these cameras on your face, you couldn't very easily tell if someone was recording at any point and it was just not something we were ready for. But it's already starting to become accepted. Just last year, Meta teamed up with Ray-Ban to release Ray-Ban Stories, a pretty sleek pair of sunglasses that were able to capture photo and videos on the go. Now these glasses do feature a little white LED that shows up when the user is recording, but it's really subtle. And it won't be long until we get some tech that doesn't feature any notification at all. It would also be a really simple modification to just remove or cover up that LED so no one would be any the wiser. Are we ready for a world that is always on the record? I don't think we are. This is too much power for one person. My next concern is a bit more left field, but I think it could be even more impactful, and that is the damage to social mobility. Now this tech, when it launches, is gonna be really expensive. It's gonna be bleeding edge stuff, and it's gonna cost a few quid. But when done right, what it will do, it will afford the user almost superhuman abilities. You'll be able to get information at a glance, you could have improved eyesight, you could get access to education that you couldn't dream possible previously. Think about how much quicker it would be to navigate from one place to another with that information fed straight to you. Think about the impact that could be had to empathy from AI analysis of the people you speak to. And further than that, think about the impact on negotiations if the glasses you're wearing could provide you with an instant profile of the person you're speaking to. We're talking like Iron Man level feeds and this stuff is not far away. We will have it very soon. The risk is that it puts a chasm between the people that can afford it and the people that can't that could be very difficult to close. It will be a big advantage and it will really separate the playing field. So moving on to the next potential hazard, just think of what the world has become over the past 15 years. We have become obsessed with our social feeds and our phones. We are continually zoned out, staring into our hands, not present in the moment. Well, what if those very feeds can perpetually be fed directly into your vision? You wouldn't even know when someone is zoned out. You wouldn't know who is paying attention at any point. It could have enormous impact on personal relationships, but even more than that, think about the impact it could have on driving. Think about how furious you'd be if you're driving down a busy road and you see someone driving, staring at their phone. They're scrolling through social media or maybe watching some Netflix. You would be really angry. Well, what if you couldn't even tell what they're watching? This tech will soon become standard and that is a big risk. Although on launch, it might be obvious that someone is wearing some AR glasses. Maybe the cameras will stand out. Maybe you'll see that kind of feed showing on the glasses itself. But over time, they'll get smaller, they'll get better, and it will be very, very subtle. And all this access to information continually can take us one of two ways. One, we can really lean into it. We can develop better than we ever have before. Or two, we can become over-reliant on that information and really regress as society. If you're old enough to remember before the smartphone boom, we used to do things very differently. 
I used to know people's phone numbers. I don't know anyone's phone numbers now. Before sat-navs, I used to know directions. I used to know how to get places. Now I don't even think about it, because the first thing I do when I get in the car is I turn on the navigation. I'd be knackered if I had to read a map. I wouldn't know where to start, because I don't need to. It's just not part of society anymore. Now when this awesome new tech is able to do that with almost every bit of information we need, then things are really going to change, and they're going to change fast. Back when I was in primary school, you weren't even able to take a calculator into a test because the teachers would say, well, what use is that going to be when you're older? You're not always going to be carrying a calculator. Well, we are. So how do we prepare for a world where we're going to have instant access to information? And lastly, and possibly the most likely risk on this entire list, is the risk to our personal data. Now, the companies that are making this tech are data giants and they're going to have access to everything you do. They're going to see exactly where you look. They're going to see all the information that you're constantly leaning on and they're going to be able to adapt everything they do to perfectly tailor to your experience. They're going to know you're attracted to that girl in accounting because you constantly look over there. They'll see your eyes continually flicking over to the packet of cookies you've got sat on the table and maybe they'll pop up a little advert for Uber Eats. We will be in the palm of their hands and we need to be ready for that situation. Now the challenge with all of this is that those that are leading the way need to be putting in the safeguards to protect us from getting in this situation. They need to make sure the future we get to is utopian, not dystopian. And you know what? I'm actually quite excited because I think that many of them are prepared for these risks. I thought about the idea for this video quite a long time ago when I was listening to a podcast by Andrew Bosworth. Andrew Bosworth is the CTO for Meta and he released a podcast called Boz to the Future. In the very first episode of that, I think it came out about six months ago, he discussed one or two of these points and mentioned how they were trying to adapt their processes to get us to a situation that didn't put us in danger of these kind of risks. I think it's awesome that there are people who are aware of those risks in those positions of power, but we need to hold the big companies to account. If things start to push in the wrong direction, then it's up to us as the consumer to redirect the course. If you've enjoyed this video, then press the like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.